Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number five of our vanilla Minecraft series. And here we are in the portal room that we built in episode number four, which I still think is pretty cool. And it's mostly the same as I left it, though there were a couple small changes made. One of them, or the most prominent one at least, is the change to Janus. And yes, his name is Janus. I don't know why, but last episode, the word Janus got stuck in my head and I just kept saying it. But it is Janus or uh, Janus, as I believe it was Becky pointed out to me in the comments. The Romans would have actually pronounced it as Janus. Anyway, over here is a dispenser hidden in the wall, just so we don't need to remember to bring gold nuggets with us all the time. And we're going to go ahead and wake old Janus up with a tribute, but pay close attention to his face, mostly his eyes. And there you go. They actually glow now, or they light up, which uh, a couple people suggested, two or three of you, and I think it's really cool. Now, initially, I didn't know how we were going to do that because I didn't want the eyes themselves to be light sources. But it turns out that we had enough space to do this. To hide some lighting behind a cauldron as well as a piston just to make sure it was completely obscured. And just light it up whenever the eyes were set to red and whenever the portal was being activated. So that worked out pretty cool. Thank you guys for that suggestion. I think that that kind of livens the face up and makes him feel... Like he's really waking up in order to uh, light the portal for us. So that's pretty cool. I also, in between episodes, went ahead and spread the rabbits out around the island. Now, these are just backup bunnies. I bred quite a few of them. But there are several spread across the island. And as I said last time, there's not a ton of them. We didn't want to make them too super duper common. But they're around. If you just kind of stroll around the island, you'll occasionally bump into one. Though, I don't really know how long that's going to be the case, because rabbits have the worst AI that I've ever seen. They will just jump off of anything. They have no regard for their own lives. So, I suspect here on my island, where there's all kinds of sheer cliffs and a lot of steep hills and stuff like that, the rabbits are probably going to kill themselves pretty quickly. I don't know how quickly, but it's bound to happen. So, that being said, it's good that we have these backups, and we'll probably be doing something with them in the near future. I think that we'll be taking them off of my island and giving them a nice little area elsewhere to kind of live out their days and allow us to have a big group of rabbits to breed from should we need to replace the ones on our island. However, that is not what we're working on today. Today we are doing something a little bit more important, and that is catching me up to the modern era. Now, I'll explain what I mean by that momentarily, but first things first, we need a little bit of a location change. And here is that location. So this is what I affectionately refer to as my Chidi platform. It is a floating platform a couple hundred blocks away from my island. My island's just right out that way, a little bit beyond render distance. And it's about a hundred blocks up in the sky. This is where I put everything that's just a little bit big, bulky, super mechanical, or, you know, just wouldn't fit on my island no matter what. So things like mob farms, which <laughs> I obviously couldn't build on my island either way. Stuff like iron farms, which are just bulky and kind of loud and stuff like that. Uh, stuff like that is going to go up here. Now, there's currently not a lot. And honestly, a lot of what's here currently is going to be torn down and built in a new way. But there's big plans. I have a ton of ideas for this place. And hopefully, if we have the time today, I'd like to go over some of those ideas with you. First things first, though, we have a new build to add up here. And like I said, that build is going to help catch me up to the modern era. Now, what I mean by that is I've played Minecraft for a very long time, and I've never really stopped ever since I first started. But I also, for about a year and a half to two years prior to starting this series, wasn't really progressing here on my server with my own builds. I was helping other people out, like I'd log on to the server and I'd help people do stuff and I would try out new features and things like that, but I wasn't really working on my own stuff. And in a lot of ways, I feel like I've been kind of trapped in Minecraft 1.8 because of that. I felt like because I hadn't really been playing the game and progressing and stuff like that, that I hadn't really kind of progressed with the rest of the game. So... I've very specifically avoided using certain new features, certain big game-changing features, because I didn't feel like I was caught up to them, that I didn't feel like I should be using them yet. So stuff like the Elytra and Shulker Boxes and Mending. 
Uh, those three in particular are things that I haven't been using, and frankly, it's pretty criminal that I haven't been. I can already hear the audible gasps from some of you not understanding why I wouldn't be using those yet. But we're going to start rectifying that today. And the way that we're going to do that is by building an AFK fish farm. Now I know AFK fish farms are a little bit OP and a little bit cheaty. I tend to agree, honestly, but I'm not going to be using it all that much. I think that what we'll do is just use it enough to get a handful of mending books. Enough to put mending on a couple tools, but most importantly to putting it on an Elytra once we get it in the next few episodes. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to take care of the AFK fish farm. Need to go out a few more blocks that aren't slabs. There we go. I think that should be a good enough distance out. We want it to be a little far out because the, uh, the build's rather interesting and I'd like to get a good angle on it. But uh, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to start building our AFK fish farm or the building that goes around it at least. And hopefully you guys like the weird idea that I have for it. So here is our AFK fish farm building, and I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've got to build something so derpy looking, and I think it turned out okay. I might want to do something yet with the tail. That's a little bit boring, but overall, I think it's good. So let's go in and throw in the fish farm in the back of this guy, and I've already picked a spot for it. I've dug out to the sky. If you weren't aware, having access to the skylights right above your water source block basically doubles the rate of like you're catching. It makes it you catch things twice as fast versus not having that open skylight. So always make sure you have that. So let's go ahead and put in our tripwire hook. This will go right over the source block. Now behind that is going to be an iron trap door and behind that is going to be a note block to catch our right clicks to make sure we don't pull back when we're not supposed to. Need to place the trap door in the right orientation and pop down some redstone. Okay. Um. Um. <laughs> Hello? Why? Why is that stuck on like that? Why is that still... Isn't that the sound of the trap door opening and closing when I walk into this? Like there's, there's a metal kerchink noise in the background, right? Why is it not? Uh, huh. So problem solved. Now that was not actually caused by Minecraft itself. That was because I was using an early alpha version of Forge, which apparently had a few redstone glitches in it yet. Hopefully that's been fixed. I'll have to upgrade later and find out. But for right now, we're using the default client and everything is working just fine. So let's go ahead and finish up our fish farm here. We're going to want to put water here next though I don't want to wash away my carpet. So let's actually put in some slabs first. Let's actually put another road down here so that we're at eye level with our farm. And now, theoretically, we should be good to go. Or not. It looks like what's happening here is the bobber is kind of skimming a little too far and falling down. If we have another block above our trap door, I think it'll bump up against this bottom edge and not go any further. Yep, so that's what it should be doing, and I assume it's working okay now. Hopefully we get a catch before too long and make sure that everything's still working and that it's actually going to uh, kind of reset properly after a catch. I don't know that this works fully on servers or not. Like, for example, that was a little bit weird. I don't know if that was just a lag spike that prevented me from capturing that or not. Looks like it. Looks like it's working. So... I think we're good, uh, except for one very glaring issue. <laughs> you can see the fish that we just caught is just kind of hanging out down there. 
And that's because we currently have no storage system. So everything would just kind of bob around down there until it despawns. Not exactly what we want. So what we're going to have to do is put a hopper right here in place of this block. Down to the ocean floor it goes. So we're going to have to place a hopper here and build a storage system down below. Now, that's fine, but it's going to cause another problem, which is that because our fish is floating here, the storage system is going to be quite ugly. Now, it's not going to be very complicated. It's just going to be hoppers going into chests, but it's still going to make a pretty big wart off the bottom of our fish. So we're going to have to cover that up somehow. And I think the best way that we can do that is to put our big fish in a big fish bowl. I think that that'll be okay. Just make a giant bowl out of blue stained glass and fill it up with water. We'll still be able to see the outline of the storage system below, but it should cover it up fairly well. So I'm going to get to that and I'll be back with you guys in just a little bit. So, here is our AFK fish farm in all of its derpy glory, and I think it turned out okay. I'm not entirely sold on the bowl, actually. I think that it's good how it is, but it might look better with a different glass color. Like right now, it feels like it's just a big chunk of floating water, which in itself is kind of cool, and I think that might be a cool way to go. Though, if the glass was white and it felt more like a separate fishbowl, that might look good too. I might have to experiment with that. We'll see. But for right now, this is how it's going to stay. And let's head on in and take a look at the little storage system that I threw in. It's nothing too fancy, just a trap door in the floor that leads down to a room full of chests. And these just get kind of chaotically filled up as we kind of fish above. Now, I did spend about an hour fishing at our AFK fish farm just to make sure that it was working. And here are the results of that. Lots of enchanted bows, enchanted fishing rods, saddles, and of course fish, as well as some books. And some of these are actually quite nice. Most notably, this one right here. So, we did get our mending book, uh, one of them at least, and this one will be going right onto an Elytra as soon as we get it, probably within the next episode or two, I'm assuming. And that is awesome. So, I will probably be AFK fishing here a little bit in between videos, just to get a few more mending books so that we have them. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't intend to use this too, too much. It's really just to hold me over until I build my villager trading system, which hopefully we're going to do before too long. So, with that project called done, at least for the time being, there's a few more things up here that I want to take care of today. And the first and kind of most critical one is fixing my storage situation down here at the iron farm. Now, this iron farm isn't super duper quick. It's not like an iron titan or anything, but it does get the job done. And I only have four double chests here. <laughs> I only put in four because I didn't intend to use this too much, but it does really fill up. And now that we're going to be AFK fishing right there, and I did very specifically put that fish farm there is because it would allow the iron farm to run as well as the mob farm when I swap to a better design at least. And that means that these chests just aren't going to cut it. In fact, they're already completely full of iron and our hoppers are starting to back up and that's probably about to break the system. So this needs to be expanded, and I'm going to try and do that without expanding the platform or anything too, too much. I should be able to make that work out okay, I think. <laughs> We're just going to end up putting a bunch of chests in a row here, really. So that's not going to be terribly exciting, and I don't think that it's worth time-lapsing or anything like that. It's just going to be me throwing in a storage system. So I'll bring you guys back in when that's done, and we have an expanded iron storage system. 
So here is what I've come up with for our iron storage system. It's nothing fancy or pretty or anything like that, but it'll get the job done. It is 12 times or six times, I suppose, the uh, storage that we had previously. So that should be nice. I expect these chests are starting to fill up already. Yep. I didn't add any item filters or anything just because I wanted to keep it simple for the time being. Realistically, I will probably end up redoing this entire area before too long. Mostly because I'm going to end up redoing the decor of our platform here. I think it's nice. I like this simplistic style and I want to keep it minimalistic so that it kind of blends with all of our different build styles like everything from our weird iron farm to cartoony giant fish. But it needs to change. There's a few things that bother me about it. Most notably these levers hanging off the bottom that we needed to power the redstone lamps. Um, we could just switch the redstone lamps out for something like sea lanterns. That might look good and work out okay. I'll have to test some stuff out and find out. In fact, I actually wanted to talk with you guys about a few things relating to this floating platform and some of the stuff that I want to do on it. And yeah, I think we'll spend the rest of the episode doing that just so you have some idea of what we're going to do up here. And maybe you can give me a few suggestions as well, because there are some things I'm still trying to figure out. Now, while I'm doing that, at least for the first part of it, I'm going to start tearing this down as well. I believe I mentioned it earlier, but this was a smooth stone and obsidian generator previously, <laughs> before Mojang broke it. Uh, I don't know why the stone generator broke. That's a little bit weird. That should still be working. I'm guessing that the lava did something weird or something, but basically the idea was you would stand here and smooth stone would just perpetually push towards you so you could AFK mine it. And that worked out pretty well. And then there was also a system in place where you could place down redstone on top of these hoppers. And there was a bug in the game for a very long time where you could basically turn redstone dust into obsidian. So I had this system where I would place down the redstone and it would automatically trigger the lava above, which was what needed to happen in order to turn it into obsidian. And it would do that and then you could just mine it out and repeat the process. Unfortunately, that doesn't work anymore, and this entire building is kind of pointless. If I want a smooth stone generator, I can make something way cooler now. Really, the entire point was just to have both in one. And uh, I did also have my snow farm in here, too, <laughs> if you can call this a snow farm. But for right now, we're just going to tear this down. If I need a smooth stone generator or a snow farm in the future, I'll be building separate buildings for them up here. But let's go ahead and tear this down and talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing up on this platform. So as I mentioned earlier, the main point of this platform is to kind of house everything that wouldn't really fit on my island. Stuff that's just big, noisy, and redstone heavy, or just feels a little bit too technical. For example, the AFK fish farm that we built today. It's not a particularly advanced build, but it had, you know, the tripwire hook and the trap door moving around and stuff like that. It doesn't really fit the theme that I have for my island, so we brought it up here. Same with the iron farms, those are just super big and loud. Uh, mob farms obviously need to be up here. Uh, the villager trading system that we're hopefully going to be doing in the not too distant future, that's going to be a very large build and have a lot of very mechanical farms associated with it for automatically gathering the things that we want to trade. So that's gonna be up here as well. In fact, on that note, we should probably talk a little bit about the layout that we're going to be going with here. The plan here on the platform is to have a central area, which is meant for mob farming purposes, which is currently here, but we're going to be replacing this entire section and redoing it very, very heavily. We'll be replacing this with a much more efficient, much more interesting looking mob farm and building a proper collection system as well. And that's probably going to be one of the first things that we do in this area. After that, though, there is a trunk going in each direction, at least other than the direction that heads towards my islands, obviously. And the plan is to have some big, really useful build at the end of each one of those paths. So currently we only have one of those, and that's the path leading out to our iron farm, which obviously that's a super useful build to have. And then along the sides, we can put whatever we want. In the case of the iron farm, there's nothing really associated with it. So we built things like the AFK fish farm, or if I wanted to build like a snow generator or anything like that, it would probably go out this way. Over here on this side, I'm thinking of building the trading system that I want to do, the villager trading system. So at the far end of this, we'll have that, and along the sides, we'll have all of the various farms that collect the stuff that we'll use to trade. At least that's the plan right now, and I think that that'll turn out pretty good. 
So that's what's going to go this way. This third direction, though, I'm not entirely sure on. The original plan was to build a overworld gold farm using giant portals, and that would still be a really cool project. I might still do that, but I also intend to build a gold farm in the nether above my nether portal, and honestly, that's just going to be way more efficient. So it might be kind of a waste to build an overworld gold farm here. Instead, we might do something like, say, a wither-based tree farm would be kind of useful and kind of cool. Or the idea that I've had recently, and I think it would be pretty neat to do, would be to build a charged creeper farm, which would allow us to actually build a couple things that would be really cool down at the end of this path. So that's what I'm leaning towards at the moment. But I would like to hear your ideas. If you have any ideas for big, super useful builds that we could put at the end of these paths, or even smaller stuff, stuff like the AFK fish farm that could go out on the sides. Um, I have tons of plans already, but if you guys have ideas, be sure to share them because you guys give me all kinds of cool... Uh, in <laughs> Tongue tied. You guys give me all kinds of cool ideas and it would be nice to see. Maybe you'll have some ideas that I've never even thought of. So if you have ideas for stuff to put up here, be sure to tell me. And with that, I think we're going to call it here for today. I know that we were a little bit talky today. We didn't get a whole lot done other than that fish over there, which uh, by my standards, that's a little bit embarrassing, but I think it was worth it. I, it was a useful build to get done. Now that we have access to mending, we can uh, kind of focus more so on building aspects and not so much on fixing tools all the time. <laughs> that took a considerable amount of my time before, by the way. So hopefully next episode, we uh, get a little bit more productive and... <laughs> make up for the rambliness of today, but we'll see. I might actually end up in the end going for the Elytra and the Shulker boxes. I'm not quite sure yet, but I will see you guys then, hopefully, if I haven't bored you to death today. And thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I'll see you then. See you later.